Here we go, Better Backs Part 2. We can do stuff ourselves, and this is the beauty of um, home treatment, that you can do it every day. The metabolic rate of discs is so slow that it actually needs that prompting, it needs that help to decompress and to circulate fluid on a daily basis if you're going to affect any possibility of, of pain reduction. We don't know how effective we are at retaining water permanently. It depends from one person to the other. MRI studies before and after back block are very encouraging. Here it is. You, you can do a similar thing with a, with a yoga brick. It's just very important that you do follow the three steps. And here, the, here they are. It must be done every day. This beautiful passive traction lying backwards over the back block. Here it is here under the sacrum. This lovely anti-sitting posture, pulling the spine apart with the weight of the legs, pulling the legs off the base of the spine in effect. So you're stretching the front of the spine, the very strong anterior longitudinal ligament, the strongest ligament in the spine. You're also stretching some of the strongest muscles in the body, which are the hip flexors, the psoas muscles, which actually adaptively shorten when the hips spend all their time bent to a right angle sitting. So again, this back block is the anti-sitting posture putting you into the antithesis of that crumpled sitting position and those create, those invoke relative negative pressures in your low lumbar discs, the other end of the spectrum to the squashing pressures that you've been enduring all through the course of the day, various forms of compression, sitting, standing, driving, you name it. So we only do one minute because the scientists tell us that we get maximum fluid shift in and out at the point of loading and unloading so staying there any longer doesn't really do any good um, and then we follow the passive hyperextension of this by this lovely knees rocking at a, at a rate that I, I, I will explain in more detail in the next slide so rocking the knees first of all rocking the knees up and down and then left and right and, um, and that opens the back of the spine. This opens the front of the spine and mainly opens the discs, whereas this actually opens the back of the spine, primarily the facet joints, which are another great source of pain. Just going back there. And then the reverse curl-ups, which is strengthening, or, or other forms of lower ab exercises, which I'll take you through. And this is going to be strengthening your belly below navel level, which is where you need the support to support your lower back. You need to do multiple reps, three or four repetitions of these three steps. In the evening, I prefer an every day. And what the back block does is passively hyperextend you, opening up the front of the disc here. You can see that's the absolute opposite of the crumpling, squashing pressures of you sitting at a, at a steering wheel for six hours. That reduces the internal disc pressure, relative negative pressure and that sucks nutrients into the disc at the front. Uh, fluid goes in both from the body of the vertebra above and below and also sucked in through the circumference of the disc wall, largely in equal measure. Um, the knees rocking is the next important thing to do, step two, and that opens, um, that opens, that pushes the disc, pushes fluid out through the front of the disc, loading the front of the disc if you, if you like, the opposite extreme to the passive hyperextension. At the same time it's pulling apart or opening the back of the spine. Now people love the back block, it is, it does feel amazing, it is extraordinary, the feel, you know, the, the, the sense of opening and release that you feel through your body, often you feel a sort of delicious degree of agreeable discomfort right where you know your back problem to be and it's all very good and good I'm glad it is but this step two this rocking the knees is just as effective because it's opening the facet joints here it's stretching muscles that are in spasm it's also stretching the back wall of the disc which is through here here's the spinal cord here's the back wall of the disc which is stretched thin by the by that, that stretches between 50 and 90 percent making a much thinner, what we call, barrier for, diffusion barrier for nutrients to get in. So there's multiple things that simply rocking the knees to the chest does. 
it's also the exercise that you do if you've hurt your back. You just lie down wherever you are, on grass, wherever you are, and rock your knees and that disperses, disperses any, any bruising or bleeding or discomfort. The rhythm of rocking your knees is very important. I like it to be just slightly faster than one hertz, so slightly faster than one cycle per second. That's what I describe as nature's rhythm. That's the rhythm of rocking a baby to sleep in a pram and the baby goes to sleep because it's calming. This is, has exactly the same effect on the muscles of your back. It helps those muscles relax. You can also do left and right rocking because with people with chronic low back pain they often have a sort of armour plated stiffness of the back of their pelvis which, is, which actually solidifies and wraps, locks up and wraps in the lower back problem as well. So in dealing with the lower back you've also got to deal with, 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 with softening and loosening and making more plastic the back of the pelvis. But we also have to support the lower back because we know that the lower back needs that and we do get that through lower abdominal strengthening. And these are the various different ones, reverse curl ups, see the head stays on the floor, the opposite to sit ups and then the knees go to the chin rather than the, run the chin to the knees. Then we have floor twists, left and right, this mainly gets your oblique muscles and then we have legs passing and they're all described in great detail on simplebackpain.com, one of my websites, best abs and worst abs. And what these lower ab ab abs exercises do is to strengthen your core. There's a lot of talk about core strengthening. You need all of them, not just transversus, particularly transversus, but uh, the, particularly the obliques and transversus, the deepest one. That provides a stronger retaining wall that the lower back needs so that you're secure in bending. All the segments don't shear off one another. But also those lower back, those, those, those exercises put the spine through a large range of functional movement from neutral to compressed and that's very uh, useful pressure changes which are stimulate, stimulatory at a molecular level which is again what we're looking for. We're looking for the opposite of that sustained loading and that automatically switches off overactive long spinal muscles. Now I could have a fifth point here which I've omitted to put in and that is that doing the reverse curls in particular automatically recruits the pelvic floor. We get an associated overflow if you like of muscles doing a similar thing Drawing the knees up to the chin helps to, to, helps to switch on the pelvic floor. And better sitting now. These are the pressures, um, uh, various pressures you can in the lower lumbar discs and you can see lifting anything is um, uh, invokes huge pressures in the lumbar spine. I always say the good thing about lifting is that it um, you put it down as quickly as you can, not so with sitting and you can see the pressures of stooping forward and sitting, very high pressures holding yourself upright are great. But I think you can see here leaning back a tiny bit and you can see a little padded pillow there, I prefer that pillow is a little bit lower, that reduces the compressive forces on your lower back. So it's so important with anybody with a lower back problem is that they sit trying to maintain that S bend of the spine, not a crumpled C bend, by having a pillow in here, in the lumbar area, which keeps that lumbar hollow, keeps the load bearing shared between the front of the spine and the back of the spine.